So now we're ready to spin. As we're cycling, I want you to look at this little pedal here. This is your resistance. So um, the higher up it is, you'll look at your little stat plaque in front of you, and that'll be on level one, which is the least amount of resistance. And as you draw it down towards the frame of the bike, it'll be getting more and more sticky. As you can see, my legs are getting slower and slower and slower. So as we cycle, I'm gonna have it on no resistance just to start off with. Um, as I'm cycling, I want you to make sure that you're still relatively comfortable and the height of your bike is, is fine. Um, you shouldn't feel like a clown on a bike, but you shouldn't feel like you're reaching all the way down. So it should be a very natural sort of cycling position in terms of your height. Your feet, this is something that I kind of go on and on about in my classes, which um, is super important to me. You always really need to lead with your heel. So at first it can be quite foreign and alien to try and do it this way. But please believe me, if you continue this way, you will never get any injuries and you'll get the best, best workout. So as you can see, my heel is drawing down all the time. I tend to say have a flexed um, ankle and a flexed foot as pretty much throughout the whole session and you can't go wrong. So always the heel down. Because if you come into your toes like this, the toes will claw in the shoe, creating a real pain potentially here. And almost if you continue like that, you might get kind of a like an equivalent of a tennis elbow into your feet, super painful. So draw down into your heels, yeah, like that. Lovely. As the resistance come in, what tends to happen, some people um, start what I call toe dragging. Don't do this either. It looks pretty pretty, but actually it's really bad for the knee. So let's get out and up and out of the saddle. This is always the challenge for people when they're new to spin. So as you come out of the saddle, I want you to be feeling very upright initially and you should be able to feel the saddle between your thighs. You shouldn't feel the saddle is impaling you, of course, but you should feel that it's there. I don't want you to feel like you're coming forwards away from the saddle. As you can see, what happens to my knees is that they go over the toes. Big no-no in any exercise. So always drawing back, making sure that you can feel the saddle between your thighs, the heels are drawing down, and it very much is about your core. Here are your handlebars, but I'm always against people putting their weight in their handlebars in any way. You don't really need to put any weight in there. It's always very much there to stabilise you. So as you can see, my fingertips are sort of casually placed on position one as I, as I, as I jog in the air. That's what's the difference about spin bikes, is that you can do this, not you can't do this on any cycle bike. It is very much like you're walking on the moon, <laughs> like that. So this is position one. Then position three, as I come forwards, as you can see, I, a lot of people tend to do this and hinge their hips forwards as they come forwards. And once again, as you hinge your hips forwards, the knees go over the toes, drawing back and hinging in the hip, making sure it's in alignment with the saddle and that you can still feel the saddle, yeah? Relaxing in the shoulders and engaging into your core. There shouldn't be any weight in your handlebars. Once again, here, it's just to stabilize you. Good. So you're spinning. And upright. This is position one. Position three. Race the position. This is when the elbows come down. People kind of get this when I say racer because they kind of has that imagery of a race bike. So this is fine. And then hands on the U. Once again, relaxing in the shoulders and making sure that the hips are going back and away towards the saddle, never forwards. So, so far, so good. Safe spinning cycle fit exercise is on his way. <laughs>